The thing is, um, yeah, I'll leave him well in the light. All right. I better not see a gleam in those eyes. <laughs> well, uh, the, the thing is, the thing is when the um, um, mayor would accept any of my stuff, it would really be on deadline. I was never late, but I sometimes would have to work any, anywhere between 10, 15, 20 hours at the last stretch, trying to keep it as even and good looking as possible. And that's when uh, Carrie would deliver it. And I tried to get a couple of hours of sleep. And um, so that was something else. But having left the work with him, I was a little anxious. That's very true. I was also very young. I um, waited about four days. And I called Mayor. And he said, well, wait and see. I'll call you. That didn't sound terribly good. That was, I thought, laying aside. So uh, a few days later, which meant almost, uh, almost a week and a half later, I called him again. And he said, well, come in. Uh, Mr. Gaines wants to see you. By the way, <coughs> M.C. Gaines, if, if any of you don't know, is, it was the father of uh, Bill Gaines, mm -hmm. who eventually uh, created MAD. Well, he didn't create it. He had a good gang of guys with him, right. so he's a pretty smart cookie himself, very much so. Anyway, um, I came rushing right in. He ushered me into MC Gaines' office, and he closed the door behind me. And, uh, but I had heard MC Gaines is an awfully nice person, and uh, if he was nice, he was probably going to put me down easy, because he sees I had done a lot of work on this. And oh, I did some story um, outlines for future story ideas. So I, I gave him a full package. And um, when the um, uh, mayor went out, there was a few moments of silence. And then MC was looking at the work. And then he said, I like it. You're in. Right. No, 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 no. He just, no, no, he didn't say that at all. You weren't even there. Nope. You didn't even know me at that time. I <laughs> didn't know you. Don't no, think of it. no. I didn't, uh, he didn't say anything like that. He just said, and then paused again for a while. Looked at me and he said, get to work. I remember that vividly, really. <laughs> because I can tell all kinds of stories from about 1951, uh, 50, when I got out of comics and I got into advertising, stayed with advertising till 1975. Mm -hmm. And I sort of slowly got back into comics through friends of ours who were in uh, the comics business. But um, at that point, in answer to what you were saying, I um, uh, started to make some changes which uh, Mayor wanted. The most important change he, he had made was to um, think of the costume as being a little more colorful. So don't put too many blacks into the cape. We'll do it in lavender. So he's the one who added color, actually. I was going to reduce color and make it more green, actually. No, keep it vivid. So I thought that was very good. Anyhow, um, I did not make many kinds of changes on the initial three pages. And I started to add a few more. Bill Finger was called in for a story that he was beginning to write. And he wrote the rest of it, <coughs> excepting for, I guess, the last two pages, which I did. But I wrote that with him, as I remember. And um, another thing of importance is the oath. The, the uh, presentation I made, thinking of him as a um, human character and having human frailties and faults, I thought he would have willpower to do what he is going to do to help um, for the good of the world and so on. He would do the good things through what he would will. 
he would not actually be able to go through a war, but he really convinced the other guys, the bad guys or whatever, that he did. In other words, that was all by willpower. Speaking of going through walls, um, it was asked of me who um, thought of the idea of his being vulnerable to wood, and we're talking to vulnerability, mm -hmm. uh, right? Um, it was not me. Okay. And for this reason, I did not think it was a good idea if he was willing himself to go through walls. And there are studs, I think, every second. Right. <laughs> How the heck is he going to go through? He goes sideways. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I didn't draw him sideways either. Right. So, you know. How the heck is he going to go through that? Also, if he does happen to be able to get through that, how about um, some beams that were crosswise and right. so on? Uh, well, if that's the case, um, the guy said no. The, so it was the editor and a few other people, I can't recall who they were, uh, all said no, don't, don't be concerned about that. No one will think about it, <laughs> excepting you. Right. So it became that early on. And as far as yellow is concerned, now, these are all things that maybe are picky and maybe they're not. I don't know. No, but things that I've been thinking of, I was just going to say that the um, uh, yellow came in later on. Uh, there was discussion, I think, regarding uh, yellow early on. Um, maybe you know more about it, or you guys. That's the 60s Green Lantern. That's the yellow, yellow weakness. Yeah. Like because uh, I, I didn't have anything like that that I knew about, right. or weakness of, of color. Um, they wanted to make sure he had a weakness, but they yeah. wanted it to be different, to differentiate between the Golden and Silver Age. Right. right. So that was brought in, in, in the Silver Age. Right. And um, I was out of it by then. You are not. You were doing the Pillsbury Boy. <laughs> you don't give that away. <laughs> no, I, I have worked for a variety of ad agencies, and one of the big ones. By the way, a lot of my accounts were uh, Kellogg's. Um, Stouffer's, um, Sarah Lee, and, uh, and also Procter and Gamble. Was it Texaco? And Pillsbury. I did te some Texaco for another agency, right. right. I won awards on a number of uh, TV commercials. Was that in connection with, say, Texaco Star Theater, or am I wrong? No, it's about that time, but okay. not, not necessarily the theater itself, okay. but commercials they used. Okay. And we were with Cunningham and Walsh. Okay. That was the agency right. at that time. I think I've and oh, win. win. Right. Anyway, um, the um, uh, Pillsbury Doughboy uh, was something I was art director on. Ah. And at ad agencies, you don't uh, really work alone. If you try to make a presentation, it's skipped aside because there's always politics. You can't do that because the guy you've got to show it to, to you, too, is above you. And if he is above you in status, you can't very well discuss that without having a group around you. So uh, usually these are group things. So um, I created the design of the Pillsbury Doughboy, right. and I worked on that a good bit. And so I was the art director on Pillsbury, not thinking that that would last any more than a couple of <laughs> years, which most ideas on, on right. TV. Right. That and the Everready Battery. Uh, uh, the uh, tiger and the tail uh, uh, and the um, gas oh, never lasted excellent. all that long. Uh, and, and yet, that was a pretty good five years, and that was unusual. We knew the guy who did that. And um, for myself, I never expected Green Lantern to go on. And Pillsbury, well, that was, you never get credit for anything in advertising anyway. <laughs> they do help you uh, um, along, you do do better within the agency here. You got an art director's award for Sunshine Biscuits. Mm -hmm. well, that was also good too. As good as the last biscuit, right. um, <laughs> which I ate. Um, so, uh, do you want to follow up from here? Yeah, I want to follow up from the Green Lantern stuff. On this right, I, we also, I also want to do the uh, post forty seven stuff too. If we got the time, we right? Got the right. Bit. I'm right. I'm fascinated by the entire thing, but we're back here with okay the original. GL and such like that. Uh, okay, the story about Alan Ladd was the Alan Ladd uh, thing yours or was no, it? No, I'm very glad um, you were you mentioned glad it wasn't. that. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, I had never heard about it. I began to hear about this. This is why I mentioned that I'd been out of comics between '50 and '75. After I got back, had gotten back into it, I began to hear about 
Alan Ladd. Well, I knew who Alan Ladd was as an actor, right. but never, never did I, or never knew that Mayer ever thought of it. Right. And I don't think Bill Finger did. Okay. And as far as I know, it's, it's just merely a rumor, okay. insofar as I know. And Alan Scott was the only um, name that thre did thread right through right. everything we did. Mm 